Lauren Liz, John Pittman's bond is set at $1,050,000 in this case. The DA's office calls John Pittman an extreme danger to the community and to those closest to him. NOPD says Pittman attacked his 70-year-old mother with a chainsaw Monday afternoon in the 3500 block of Franklin Avenue in Gentilly. The woman called police after escaping to a relative's house just over three miles away. The DA's office says the victim's arm was hanging on by skin. NOPD says New Orleans wow. EMS was able to pack the wound, give the victim blood on scene, and doctors were able to save her arm. NOPD wow. says Pittman resisted arrest and he fell down a set of stairs with officers. Police say Pittman had multiple cuts and lost a tooth. According to NOPD, one officer was bitten and another sustained multiple cuts, neck, head and leg injuries this morning the district attorney's office also confirms Pittman is the same suspect accused of brutally attacking a 73 year old military veteran at Union Passenger Terminal in 2023 the DA's office says the victim was attacked in the bathroom and found in a pool of blood this morning Pittman appeared before judge so how was he on the street after he attacked this white privileged guy is what he in 2023 how was he on the street to Cut his mom's arm off. Then this guy got old. He got extra privilege. He should have it. The liberals will, let, will never know. Oh, man. Wow. At Union Passenger Terminal in 2023, the DA's office says the victim was attacked in the bathroom and found in a pool of blood. This morning, Pittman appeared before Judge Camille Buris, where she increased his bond in that case to a total of $300,000. Pittman faces charges of secondary battery and battery of the infirm. Pittman's defense attorney says his client has a history of mental illness and says he has not been on his meds. And it's an unfortunate mental health issue, not necessarily criminal per se, but mental health. And until we start addressing these type of issues around the city, we're going to continue to have these type of instances. Uh, think, about the, think about the audacity. The guy has meds. He's not taking them. But we have to address mental health. Yes, it's a criminal mental health issue. Yeah. It, he has meds and he's refusing to take them. So the, it's been diagnosed and treated. Maybe he means uh, we gotta start force feeding the sun then. Wow. Around here. The commissioner ordered Pittman to an ankle monitor and house arrest if he does bond out. He's also ordered to stay Wow. Stay away from his mother and not contact her. NOPD says Pittman's mother <sighs> remains in critical condition. Two officers were released from the hospital as Oh my god, that that ending was fucking bonkers. Wow. So the officers got so injured that. trying to stop him. Yeah, the officers that you know are represented by um John Grayson. John Grayson represents all the <laughs> officers, including the ones who came here and stopped him from killing this this this, this 70 year old woman. Wow. Neighbors say the video and they didn't just of the shoot after shooting at a shopping center is startling. The NOPD says a cleaning crew was shot at by an unknown gunman. Andres Fuentes has more reaction to the crime. A week ago, Sun this um, busy Umbrito. shopping center near Gentilly and Frenchman was a crime scene, with people still shocked at what happened. They're like anything can happen at any given moment. Like some, you could just be doing your job, and then somebody can just come upon you with a gun. Surveillance video shows a cleaning crew sweeping the parking lot last Thursday before oh, 11 o'clock when a sedan rolled up. The passenger got out the car and then fired several shots at the crew. NOPD says that no one wow. was harmed and the suspects sped off. The video surprised shoppers who frequent the area. You can't do nothing around here. Mm -hmm. You have to be cautious doing and watch your surroundings because you just never know. I'm glad to hear that everybody walked away, you know, safe and sound. They're attacking innocent people. Um, I hope that they can be found. And if anyone out there knows who they are, please turn them in. The NOPD tells us that they're sure. trying to find the gunmen involved in this case. But speaking with criminologists, they tell us that statistically trying to make an arrest is difficult. So really, there's no evidence there. And if these folks didn't know, I mean, he, he got away with it. The New Orleans City Council's arrest breakdown dashboard shows NOPD has made arrests in just 37 percent of non-fatal shootings so far this year. 
That stat is higher than it has been since 2018, but it's lower than arrests made for murder so far in 2024. It's a stat that Dillard University criminologist Dr. Ashraf Ishmael says could be linked to a lack of information. And ultimately, you think of fear. You know, um, if I do report, what are, they, are we talking about gang related behavior? Are we talking about people that are, you know, are not afraid to, to hurt you? You know, and so that's probably where, where it comes into play or does not want to get involved with the police. Reporting in Gentilly, Andres Fuentes, Fox 8, Local First. Those little um, burritos was just there working, cleaning up a fucking. Cleaning up the neighborhood, all the sons, cigarillo guts and shit. They they look like kids even, you know, these on burritos. They look young as hell. Can you imagine that? Think about that. Unbelievable, man. Some son man just comes up and starts shooting at you. And if he gets caught, he'll go to prison and do that time on his head. And if nothing he even will be gonna lost. Do it. If he even got to yeah. do the time. Yeah, but, but I'm saying if the judge gives him a thousand-year sentence... Nothing was lost. No, nah. no, nah. for nobody, not even his ass, to be real. Second Other degree murder that, suspect I, I is back in custody here. after. It's not unbelievable. It's sun believable. Well, facts. <laughs> <laughs> Second degree murder suspect is back in custody after cutting off his electronic monitor last night, launching an all out search. As Rob Masson reports, those monitoring privileges have now been revoked now that the suspect is back in custody. 27 year old Cutby Abdelkader was out on bond and an ankle monitor and accused of crimes in Orleans, Jefferson, or and St. Tammany parishes when he allegedly cut off his electronic monitor Wednesday night, prompting an all out search. We received uh, an alert last night, a little after 8 p.m., and we went. People in New Orleans got some rough teeth, man. Y'all worse than England, man. A little after 8 p.m and we went straight into our protocols. Abdul Kader was originally arrested for the second degree murder of Anthony Francois, who police say was shot twice in the back in May of 2021 outside Abdul Kader's Canal Street vape store. He was released on a $350,000 bond, and while out on bond, he is accused of falsely reporting to the NOPD that he had been robbed at this Tulane Avenue convenience store, which Same police man. say was to cover up a business loss. He was also arrested for possession of drugs in Jefferson Parish and for DUI and aggravated flight from an officer in St. Tammany, but remained free on bond with an ankle monitor in spite of attempts by the DA's office. So you catch three new cases while you're on ankle monitor. Yo. <laughs> office to have Judge Marcus DeLarge remand him to jail. We're a country that allows people to be innocent until proven guilty, and there is a an ability to get out of jail pre-trial. With the Orleans DA's office pushing once again to revoke Abdul Kader's bond once and for all, on Wednesday night, just hours before he was scheduled to reappear in court, he somehow managed to remove his electronic monitor here on Wright Avenue, not far from Oakwood Mall. As he tossed it into the canal, I'm going to assume he cut it. Abdul Kader's monitor was being actively supervised, and the media and the NOPD, as well as U.S. Marshals, were notified immediately. Well, this is just another example of live tracking. After the alerts went out, Abdul Kader turned himself into criminal court and has now been placed in the Orleans Justice Center with no bond nor ankle monitoring privileges. Rob Masson, Fox A. It took all that for him to lose his ankle monitoring privileges. That's crazy. What it takes, man. Oh. He was on his way to a Three Stooges audition. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, that was yeah, that was crazy, man. Um, whew, man, my God, man. Um, Melinda. But first, this evening, prosecutors are now pursuing the death penalty in the brutal death of a 12-year-old Chester County girl. We're following new developments in this case on your News at Five. Our investigative team has followed this tragic story for months now, and prosecutors call what Melinda Hoagland's father and his girlfriend did torture. And now they're joined by Melinda's family as they seek justice. I'm Yuki Washington. I'm Jessica Cartalia. Both Rendell Hoagland and Cindy Warren face first and third degree murder charges. Chief investigative reporter Joe Holden walks us through what happens next in this case. And we do want to warn you, some of the details are very disturbing. 
Good evening. We have to warn you, some of the details released today by prosecutors are very difficult to listen to. They say 12-year-old Melinda Hoagland had sustained so much torture and abuse over years that she was programmed, in their words, prosecutors say, programmed not to report it. Investigators say Rendell Hoagland and Cindy Warren unleashed years worth of so much torture and terror on 12-year-old Melinda Hoagland. They're now pursuing the death penalty against the couple wow. from the Coatesville area. Melinda was struck in the face so badly that she had to be held home from school because makeup would not cover up her injuries. They forced her to do endless amounts of chores. They forced her to do endless amounts of exercise all while berating her and calling her an idiot. Melinda died in early May, arriving at the hospital weighing only 50 pounds after detectives say she was unconscious for hours. Over the course of an extensive CBS News Philadelphia investigation, we uncovered missed red flags. Melinda had been removed from school by Hoagland and Warren. And because her own mother wasn't able to care for her due to a serious illness, Melinda ended up in the care of Cindy Warren, a woman who had been convicted of child endangerment in 2009. There were even court orders barring Warren from being around Melinda for extended periods of time. Damn. Attorneys Tom Bosworth and Alexandria Crothamel represent Melinda's estate and her three older half-sisters. They um, are very upset to hear the extreme details that were released today. Uh, but at the same time, they want justice for. Why didn't they take the girl? Why didn't they take? Why didn't the three older half sisters? They may they may have been didn't want to you know didn't want to take care of a kid. You got a you got a sister out there that's in. Come on, man. Y'all don't get off the hook, man. Y'all don't get to act all. Nah, fuck no. She, she went through all that for all that time and y'all was out here in the world. Nah, you don't get to just show up like we want all tough and shit with black shirts on like you fucking tough at court. Nah. Half sisters. They um, are very upset to hear the extreme details that were released today, uh, but at the same time, they want justice for Melinda. So they're torn between um, supporting their sister and dealing with their father. They're pushing for the creation of a database that tracks child abuse offenders, given Cindy Warren's history. These folks were only allowed to be in this environment with this child only after repeated failures by the very people who are responsible for the welfare of our children. Now, neither Cindy Warren nor Rendell Hoagland have commented about the allegations they are facing. They are both due back in court late next month for a preliminary hearing. Outside the Chester County Courthouse, Joe Holden, CBS News, Philadelphia. Savages, man. The half-sisters could be minors and thus they wouldn't be available as parents. I mean, or they could not be. I mean, it could be like 1920, and they wouldn't want to do that. Uh, yeah. And also, also the 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 system really doesn't want them usually to do that. Yeah. No. What I'm saying is just take the girl. Like, all right, you coming with us? We got you. And they gonna have to come get us. Like, the city gonna have to come take you from us. That type of shit, Good like, point. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, like, okay, she with us, and you know, like that type of thing. That there's no record of like the city having to come and get them from get her from them. Um, it's just you know, just the the whole showing up at court, you know, what I'm saying after like somebody been abused for twelve years and shit, and acting all like surprised and shit. I I got a family that's crazy, like. My um, my stepfather, his family, they, they just regular DC. They're not crazy, but they have crazy elements, and the the cold collective is not crazy, but there's crazy elements in that family, and all this shit that we see happens in within that family, and I'm very close with them, and you know I've been deeply involved in a lot of the craziness over the years, and people know, okay. 
everybody knows what's going on in these families. And I've seen people ignore it. I've seen people turn the blind eye. I've seen people like just not want to get involved. I've seen people and go out to the club with the person who's doing it. I've seen people smoke weed with the person who's doing it or just stay away from them or whatever and ignore it. You know what I'm saying? I've seen all of that. I've seen the kids looking abused, being abused, being malnourished and shit like that and coming around and people just being like whispering behind their backs and shit and people just looking and being like oh making faces or whatever and look looking at each other and stuff like oh my god and not doing nothing about it i've seen it that's why i just be like yeah don't show up at court like oh my god they did what was going on no no you knew i feel the same about the oh yes uh the person's been living on the street for five ten years and you show up at the court when when they get killed by a cop <laughs> exactly 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 the same type of thing you everybody knows you wouldn't get that dude five bucks he owe you a hundred bucks and you told him you until he he, he told him you cut him off because he, he didn't pay you the hundred bucks you gave him last time and now he's killed by a cop and you standing on stage with a suit on looking all stately standing next to ben crump and shit. Give me a city, man. Um, let's see what's going on. Let's let's see a couple of these cities before we get out of here. Continue to hit the like button. Continue to um, take the five dollar challenge. We need one percent of you guys to take the five dollar challenge, man. Um, give give me a um, give me a city, man. Pick a city, man. Portland. We did we did Portland the other day. Salute to my man Steve S. Oct Nation Hall of Famer. Coming through once again. Steve S in the building. Shout out to Barry B. How about San Diego? San Diego. Superchargers. Let's see, man. Ugh. Um, San Diego is usually they don't have enough sons for anything to really be going on down there. They got sons, but not enough, man. Um, they have a a Comic Con festival there. Um. Yeah, they don't have enough sons, man. Yo, what's up, yo? What's happening? It's having technical difficulties. Veterinarian. Oh, yeah. Veterinarian Clark Kelly died from a heart attack during a break into his Rolando clinic back in 2022. Patrick O'Brien pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter, and Dr. Kelly's family thought that would be the end of it. But they say the justice system has let them down time and time again, and they fear it's putting all San Diegans at risk. It's scary, Steve. It's scary. Karen Kelly didn't even know the man responsible for her dad's death was out of jail until after he got <laughs> Yeah, okay, his son, his son glider here, man. That's enough, man. Responsible for her dad's death was out of jail until after he got arrested again. I don't have any answers as to why this has happened. But all I know is he was literally, the door was open and he walked out. O'Brien served two years of his four-year sentence and then was let out of jail early for good behavior. So he killed a glider, got two, four years, did two. Wow. 
and was let out of jail early for good behavior and credit for time served. But just days after his release, he was rearrested for violating his probation and sentenced to 120 days behind bars. Karen was told he wouldn't get out until August, but he was released July 8th. So she contacted the district attorney's office. Andy Aguilar, when I asked him how could this happen, he said maybe a jail screw up. CBS 8 reached out to the sheriff's department, which sent us a statement saying it was no mistake, adding after the recalculation of the sentencing information to include applicable credits, Mr. O'Brien was properly released on July 8th, 2024. But part of the original plea bargain was that O'Brien has to wear a GPS monitor and live in a community transition center following his release. But take a look at the court order. The GPS monitoring box wasn't checked and no where it was it written that he needed to be in a supervised living situation. And this dangerous, violent criminal was released with no tracking, no place where he was supposed to go and be monitored and treated for his addiction, nothing. O'Brien has already been arrested again for violating his parole. Clark's family hopes this time he'll be forced to complete his entire sentence, keeping him behind bars for about two years. It's opened all of our wounds as victims because we continuously have to live. Not only do we have to process the grief of my father's murder, but we have to continuously process the incompetencies of the system. In Rolando, Steve Price, CBS 8. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Wow. At least you're speechless, man. Jeez. But Ak, he didn't kill the guy. He just uh, let him have a heart attack while he was... Uh, rummaging through his store. Yeah, man. Whew. Yeah, this was, that, was, that was a good son, man. Man, he only, he had a lot of ad mixture, man. Um, give me another city, man. Whew. Man. Pensacola. Oh, man. Damn. Rough out here, man, being a son, man. Sure. <sighs> yeah, they don't have much going on. They talking about Sean the Master, man. Sean the Master. An a Pensacola man is in the Santa Rosa County Jail after a death in Escambia County. The sheriff's office arrested Timothy Kramer after finding his wife dead from a gunshot wound. 47-year-old Rosa Kramer was reported missing yesterday. Deputies found her dead at a home on Hillcrest Avenue around midnight. They also found a dog with a gunshot wound and took it to a vet where it later died. Kramer was arrested by Milton Police this morning. He's charged with homicide and animal cruelty. Okay. Okay. Pretty standard. Killed his wife and shot the dog. Jeez. Okay. God is doing some shit, man. Um, we like to keep it in house. Also, have the latest out of Corpus Christi. Police are now working to identify human remains found near the apartment of a missing New Braunfels college student, Caleb. We only got about five, 10 minutes before yeah. this thing goes down. It's a race against time. We got one more on the backside. All right. One more on the backside. 